Hey guys, 123 Toy back again with a brand new video. Now this video is going to be really cool. This is actually brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. They asked the question, hey, what does polyfill actually do and can it do some of the things that some people claim that it can do? Now it's pretty cool because I let my patrons actually choose at least one video once a month and we try to work out a video that is doable by me and, and something that they want to see. And this is what they brought up. Now this is what we call polyfill. Polyfill is actually just uh, well, a sound absorption material that you can put inside speaker boxes. Now there's a claim. Now the claim is that if you take this polyfill and you have a box that you built just a little bit too small, a sealed enclosure, you build a little bit too small, the claim is that you can put polyfill in there and it will make the speaker think it's in a much larger box, thus changing the response and hopefully changing the response in a way that would give it the same response as the bigger box. So today we're gonna to test just that. Does polyfill actually make that box larger than what it actually is? So in order to do that, we got a few things set up for you. Now, we got these two boxes. You're gonna look at them and you're gonna think, well, they're exactly the same. Well, they're not. If we actually turn them sideways, you're gonna see that one of them is actually shallower than the other one. And that's because we actually created a box that is the perfect size for this particular subwoofer. Now this is the W51138 SMF by Tang Band, which is one of my favorite small subwoofers. So we built this box, which is about the perfect size for it, and this other box is about half the size. So when we measure them, we should get a different result. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Dayton OmniMic, which is by far my favorite testing microphone, and we're gonna be using the OmniMic software. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that microphone and actually stick it right close to the cone of the subwoofer. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, well why would you do that? Don't you typically measure from three feet out? Well yes, with a normal speaker you measure it from three feet out, however we're inside a room environment and because we're in a room environment we don't want any type of room reflections or the room to be part of those measurements. So in order to make sure that we're not measuring any of that, we're going to bring the microphone very close to the subwoofer and that should get rid of any first room reflections. But on top of that, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this subwoofer to the edge of the table. That way it's not bouncing off the table itself. The first reflection is going to be way down at the floor, which should not interfere with these tests the way that we're testing it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and measure both of these and take our control test. So these will be our controls. We'll have the control of the box with no polyfill that's the perfect size and the box with no polyfill that's half the size. Then we're gonna go ahead and fill up this smaller box with polyfill and hope that the response actually changes to match the one in the much bigger box. Now will it, will it not? I don't know, but let's go ahead and test it out. Alright guys, so we went ahead and did the first two tests and you'll notice that there was actually a difference. There's about a 10 hertz difference between the black and the red line. So in between the small box and the full box. So what we're going to do now is take this small box and we're going to stuff it with polyfill. Now you already saw I stuffed this with about a quarter full and that's very loosely stuffed. It wasn't much at all. So I don't know if there's going to be a difference or not, but we're going to go ahead and test it right now and see if we see any difference. Now if there is, this could have some pretty big implications. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so we already did the quarter inch full and we saw a little bit different. So this is about a half full, it's lightly stuffed. And let's just see if we're gonna continue to see a difference or not. Because if we're not, then you know it doesn't really make sense to continue to test. So let's go ahead and see if there's any more difference with about being a half full. <laughs> okay, you heard me laugh because there of course is another difference. It's not much, it's minimal. But there is a difference. It's another about one to two hertz. So, you know, I, I think at this point in time, we, we can see what we're doing. We're not getting much at the rate that we're going. So I think we really need to stuff the heck out of this box and see if we can get this black curve. Because if we can meet this black curve, uh, well, we'll talk about it if we can do it. Let's go ahead and see if we can do it.
All right, guys, now I hope you enjoyed those results because they are quite astonishing and quite frankly, they have some pretty major implications for those of you who want to build speakers and those of you who already do. So let's go ahead and talk about what we saw and why it did it. All right, so the first thing that we saw is the more polyfill that we stuck in there, the flatter the response we got and the more extension we got on the low end. Now, why is that? Well, that's because what we are actually doing is changing the cue of the box. Now, typically for a linear response, we want a cue of 0.7. Now, anything above that is going to give you a hump in your frequency response and not the low extension that you want. So why is that so important? Well, it's important for a couple reasons. Let's go ahead and play a scenario real quick. Let's just say that you have decided to make a 15 or 18 inch subwoofer sealed cabinet and you're super excited and your wife gets home and says, you are not putting that in my house. Well, the problem is you want this huge box for it. What if you could make that box smaller, stuff it with polyfill and make your wife happy and you happy? That's a pretty big compromise. And for you, a huge win. Now, there's another reason why you might want this as well. Let's talk about you building like a speaker. So if you're building a two-way speaker and you're building a sealed cabinet and you have like a six and a half inch woofer and a tweeter and you say, man, I don't know that I really want to make my box as big as WinISD or some of these other programs are saying that I should really make it for maximum extension. That's okay, make it smaller and stuff it with some polyfill and hopefully get the response that you want without having to worry about the size of the speaker. All right, now there is one issue with this. If you really wanna be doing this, you're gonna to need to get a measurement microphone. I hate to say it, but that's just really what it boils down to. Without a measurement microphone, you're just guessing. And you really don't know exactly how much polyfill you're gonna need. And honestly, I can't tell you, and no one else is going to be able to tell you unless we've already created the speaker ourselves. So what does that mean for you? It means if you really want to start doing some of these things, create smaller boxes, which I think is really important, then you probably should get a measurement microphone. I link some in the description down below, such as the Umic One, which is a fantastic microphone, and of course the Dayton OmniMic, which is my favorite, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of measurements. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those results. I thought they were pretty exciting and pretty eye-opening. And honestly, you now have an answer as to whether or not polyfill actually does make the box bigger. Well, it does. So if you have any questions or any comments or concerns about that, just throw them in the comment section down below. I try to get back to you guys when I can. Now, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you back. And don't forget to ring the bell. That way you can get instant notification on new videos that are coming out. Now, if you want some power onto what videos may or may not come out and you want maybe some questions answered, why don't you go ahead and check out my Patreon page. Maybe there is a tier there that will fit your needs. All right, guys. Thanks again. This is 123 Toy, and I'm out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think that's good. All right.